Hi, my name is Hadassah, and I'm here with Kate Ramsey, Senior Clinical Supervisor for Retreat at Lancaster County. Good morning. It's lovely to see you. Good morning. So my first question for you today is, at what age did you begin to talk to your children about drugs and alcohol? I think we need to always assume that our children know a lot more than we realize um, through media, through old school things like the playground. Kids pick up stuff early. So I think age appropriate ways as soon as honestly, as soon as they enter elementary school or any kind of school um, to start talking about what they see. If you drink a beer at night, if you uh, see somebody smoking, address those things in an age appropriate way. So another question is, what are the, some of the most popular drugs being used right now by young people? Wow. Um, opiates, of course, are huge. We know that from the news. We up here in Lancaster County, uh, we are seeing an increase in the use of meth. Um, we're also seeing an increase in ketamine, which is a manufactured a synthetic drug. And uh, we're seeing a lot of fentanyl like you're seeing across the country. So what are some of the potential side effects of those drugs? So opiates obviously depress the system. Um, can make somebody move very slowly. It's one of the reasons why overdose is so dangerous because it slows the system down so much that they can actually die. Everything will stop. Um, methamphetamine, some of the symptoms you'll see on the exterior is the person will begin uh, picking at their face. You'll start to see scabs all over their skin. You'll start to see them become emaciated uh, as they just burn off intense energy. And then something like fentanyl, it has a lot of the effects of other opiates, but it's 50 to 100 times more powerful than, uh, than morphine. So if you have someone who is using that, they're at risk of immediate death from overdose. What are some common misconceptions about substance use disorder? I mean, I think the most obvious and biggest misconception is that it's only bad people who use. Um, <laughs> When we look at our children and what they have to endure daily in terms of stressors, these are people who've grown up post 9-11. They are used to shootings happening everywhere at any time. We know just this week there were shootings in uh, you know, beauty parlors and shootings in a grocery store. These kids are terrified that there will be shootings in their schools. They're in the middle of a pandemic where they are completely isolated from everybody they know and people they love may be very ill or may be dying. Um, we have these kids growing up also with just the regular stressors of being a, a child or a young adult. And the stress is overwhelming. When a child or a young adult reaches for some sort of substance, they discover what seems like a miracle cure. Everything feels better. Uh, they seem funnier. They seem like they can get along with people better. Stress disappears. So really, anybody who is living right now in this day and age, and any child or young adult, could uh, wind up using in a really unhealthy way to cope with the life that they're living in. Okay. What is self-medication and why might kids self-medicate? So clinically, self-medication is using substances to manage what uh, appear as mental health symptoms. So a lot of times you'll see people self-medicate due to anxiety, due to depression, due to feelings of hopelessness, stress, and students will self-medicate for a lot of reasons. They may use opiates to manage anxiety and stress. Uh, they could use things like Adderall so that they can stay up late to get all the homework done that they need to get done. There's a lot of reasons people self-medicate, but it can lead to lifelong substance use disorders. What are the signs that your child might be using? This is actually a complex question because oftentimes the signs that your child may be using can also be signs that your child is having some mental health symptoms, could also be signs that your child is just a healthy adolescent and is showing signs and symptoms of being an adolescent. Um, but what you're looking for, for any of those, is drastic changes in behavior, uh, changes in social groups, uh, increase in irritability or anger, um, and just behaviors that you haven't seen before that aren't typical of your child. But as I said, 
one thing can look very much like another. If you have concerns, don't go right and right up on your child and giving them a hard time. Talk to a professional, share what you're seeing, try to speak with your child and see if you can learn what's going on and then continue to work together with a professional if there is something significant happening. Thank you for joining us for National Drug and Alcohol Awareness Week. Of course, thank you for having me, Hadassah.